Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, please, before you sit, tell your neighbor, you look much better than you did last time I saw you. Bonus, if let's put our hands together. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's bless the Lord up and help. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Uh, wow, wow, what a, a, a historic moment uh, to come in the last conference in this building. And uh, I, I take pleasure and honor truly to, to be part of that. And I want to pay my homage to uh, Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice um, for having made it possible for me to come again in this wonderful, beautiful country of Kenya. Let's put our hands together for them. Come on, let's honor our mom and dad. Amen. Amen. And uh, of course, to the leadership of this church, and we greet you tonight. Thank you so very much. And uh, Miss Bertha, happy birthday! Uh, she's the one that has been facilitating my coming. Thank you so very much. And to Pastor Geoffrey and uh, Moses, thank you for the Pope welcome you gave me. <laughs> Amen. We appreciate you. Receive the greetings from uh, the United States of Polokwane. In, in South Africa. I really wanted to bring my strawberry along. Um, <laughs> so uh, back home, it's, it's our exam time. So kids, uh, our boys are writing exams. So we felt that uh, they, they will need that support. And um, for that reason, my wife could not make it um, with us this time. And uh, also we are in the building process of uh, our auditorium, which we uh, we about 80% to, to complete it. So um, we already having church in a, in a new vicinity around our town. So we, we also make sure that uh, either uh, one of us is there so that uh, new people that come have to get to know, you know, us and we get to know them. But she sends her love and uh, she's praying for us this morning. Amen. Um, I'm going to preach to you this morning. Uh, as Pastor Jeffrey here was saying, um, God will supply your need. God is going to bless you um, with what you are trusting him for. And I just feel that, you know, let me just, just sustain um, that, that expectation that before this service is over you would have your answer of what you're trusting God for amen, amen. so you better take a good look to your neighbor because before the service is over their smile is going to change amen. amen let's put our hands together for the wonderful worship team God bless you thank you amen you guys are always a blessing, amen. Brian, I was expecting a ring on your finger, amen. <laughs> amen. All right, next time when I come, I hope, amen. All right, let's go to the Bible. <laughs> Faith, it's good to see you, amen. Let's go to, between the book of Genesis and Revelation. <laughs> I want to use for a subject this morning, levels which God answers prayers. Levels which God answers prayers. We're going to deal with those. And I believe it, I'm going to share about three of those. And um, you, you, you are obliged to fall under one level in which God is going to answer your prayers this morning. Um, I'm going to talk about three levels. The first level is that God can use a person to answer your prayers. So don't take for granted the person that you're sitting next to because they might be your next boss. The second level which God answers prayers, God can use his angels 
to answer prayers. The last level which I'm going to deal with is that the big G himself can come down and answer your prayers. In my introduction, uh, let me say that your world is the reflection of what you know. Vice versa, what you know is the reflection of your world. So uh, if somebody has something that you don't have, it reveals that they know something which you don't know. And if you claim that you know everything, you have simply exposed your ignorance. Because a human being is limited to only that which they have learned. And the more you learn, the more you realize how less you know. And uh, what you don't know, it's greater than what you know. So again, your world will be the reflection of your wisdom. Um, when I come to this church under the leadership of Bishop Jimmy, and uh, when I'm seeing people flocking like this, uh, you know, you're, you're about to build another building. Uh, so his world is the reflection of his wisdom. And vice versa, his wisdom is the reflection of his world. Everybody has a world. So uh, uh, that in itself can tell if somebody is ready for a change or shift. Am I talking to somebody? Um, God is about to usher us back home. We are preparing the body of Christ for the revival. And we are saying that God is about to usher us into the revival. What we are, not, what we are talking about, it's not the visitation, but we are talking about the habitation of God. We, 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 we are talking about services which are going to be predictable, that when you know that if I'm going to that meeting, I'm going to meet God. So when we're dealing with the dynamics of seasons, based on God's operation and... Um, based on what God is about to do in ourselves, um, in our lives. And I believe in this part of the world, you also have four seasons in the year. Am I right? It's the same thing back home. So those are three months apart. But in other parts of the world, you only have two seasons, which are six months apart. Other part of the world, you only have one season. So it, it, it is hot throughout or it's cold throughout. So depending on which geographical location you are coming from, your seasons are different in terms of their definition. So having spoken about wisdom will reflect your world or your world will reflect your wisdom. It also means that your knowledge will reflect how long your seasons has to be. So if you're sitting next to somebody it took them whatever years or seasons to get blessed. That does not mean that you have to walk their journey to get to where they are. It's based on your knowledge and your wisdom and your, your hunger after the things of God. So what I'm saying here is your season is about to change. And, and it might just take one service for God to change your season. Oh, yes, if you believe that, say amen. amen. So these are the dynamics of seasons. When, when God's seasons are, are being ushered into our lives, these are the things that we will start to see. Number one, the least will become the ruler. In other words, uh, the, the last shall become first. There's a promotion that is coming your way. And this kind of a promotion, it's not according to logic and the rationale of, of how we think. God is about to promote somebody and it might come in the service. Oh, Jesus, you better, you, you better treat somebody that you're sitting next to with respect. Amen. Because you will never know that which they will become. But, but I'm sensing and I'm making this declaration now. Promotion is in the room right now. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, promotion is in the room. 
that was a boring neighbor get a better neighbor and say neighbor promotion is in the room thank you jesus in matthew 2 verse 6 and said thou bethlehem in the land of judah thou art not the least amen you thought you were the least and god is pointing at you this morning i said you are not the least favor it's your portion number two when the seasons of god are being ushered in we're going to see the spiritual traffic being controlled by the rushes I, I, I've just stolen the idea here when we had somebody praying for Kenya. Because the direction of this country, it's in our hands. So as the Russians, we need not to fold our hands, but we have to come and make uh, 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 declarations of how we want our country to be. We can bless this country. We can curse this country. Amen. And for you not saying something, you are saying something. So you rather say something. Because you're going to have what you say. And so the season of God, when it comes and the revival comes, the direction is going to come to church. The president is going to come to church on the advice on what is the Lord saying concerning the direction of this country. I tell people and say, I don't belong in the street where I live. But that street belongs to me. It might not have my name on it. But I stand there, make declarations, no premature death, no sickness and disease, no witch is going to fly over the radius of my street. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Number three, God's seasons are ushered by the move of God. When God shows up, God, the big G himself, is about to show forth and show up. Grace is not revealed where there's no hardness. Amen. We are going to see the grace of God when we go through hardness. Number four. Number four. God will overtake every man, I mean every plan made by man. When his season comes, God will overtake every plan made by man. I was telling our church and say, don't write... Uh, uh, with a pen on your diaries use a pencil because what you're writing is not permanent amen when you have pens use a pencil because you might have to use an eraser god might give you a different direction than you're about can you imagine uh, joseph and mary they were got, they're about to get married preparing for their wedding and so forth and so on where the wedding is was going to be, bright maids, what they're going to put on, who's to be on the program, where they're going to spend their honeymoon. But God had yet different plans. She got pregnant before marriage. Amen, amen. So Joseph needed not to do some job to get her pregnant. Amen. I'm declaring this morning that God will frustrate your plan for good. There's going to be an acceleration of time. God is going to cast you, cut you some cost. I wish I can talk to somebody up in here. Somebody say, we need the revival. There are signs that the church of God needs a revival. Signs that the church needs a revival. Number one, we need a revival because it has been a long time since we enjoyed a season of refreshing. As I've said, I'm not talking about the visitation, but I'm talking about the habitation. I'm reading a book. I've just read it. I'm reading it again. It's called They Told Us Their Stories. They told me their stories. Uh, this book was uh, on the account of people that were in Azusa in the 1900s when th the revival came. One of the fascinating stories uh, that is recorded in that book is uh, one gentleman who was in his 70s. Uh, because this book was compiled around 60s and 70s because these people were that old around that time. And this guy said, I never used to miss church, not because I was interested in the preaching or singing. He said, I was a, I was a, uh, a little baby, four or five years old. When I went to church, I would just be uh, playing under the pews. And he said, because there were some mist uh, that uh, were tangible, some form of cloud. That he said, I will make cars as a boy and I will be playing around with those kind of stuff. He said, little did I know, I only uh, 
it only came to my mind when I was growing up that that which I was playing with was the manifest present glory of God. And uh, they said in services like those, not only um, usual healings will take place of flu headaches, but they said people that came there uh, being amputated and uh, legs, hands will grow just in their presence as they've been praying. God, God will give people new eyeballs in the eye socket and all those kind of stuff. We are coming to seasons of such miracles. Amen. Somebody say we need the revival. Oh yes, God, we need a revival and it might as well start right here this morning in the name of Jesus. The second reason why the church needs a revival is because this century has seen a great moral and a spiritual decline. Amen. We, 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 have, we have come to the place of we are complacent. Amen. We, 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 we are no longer seeking after God's heart the way we would. Sin is no longer sin as it used to be defined. There's so much moral, uh, 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 you know, great moral decline. Am I talking to somebody? I was in the UK driving with a friend of mine and he was showing me some other churches. He told me some, some fascinating story about a certain church that I saw. And uh, will be showing me churches that have now become nightclubs. And uh, some are supermarkets. They are using a pulpit as a cash point. And uh, one, of, one, one of the churches that he showed me, he said, uh, there's a pastor who was pastoring this church who went for a holiday for about two, three weeks. When he came back, he was reintroducing himself because when he left, he was a mister. And he came as missus because he has changed his gender during that vacation. He came on a high heel with makeup and lipstick and Brazilian hair. And, and the church was acceptance of that. So, so we are living in a season whereby we really need God to kick in. Back home, I wonder if you have heard about this. We are having these fruitcake uh, prophets that, that are rising up, giving people snakes and telling them it's going to taste like chocolate. They are eating grass, drinking petrol in faith that it, it changes taste like an apple juice and all those kind of stuff. We need the real revival. We, we are sick and tired of all these things that are flying around, amen, uh, 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 damaging uh, the, the image of the church. I wish I can talk to somebody up in here. Amen, 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 amen. We have to come to the place where, number three, the church is no longer respected. We need a revival for the church to draw back its dignity. That people will know that we are not just carrying Bibles because we are religious people. Am I talking to somebody up in here? We need a revival because true conviction of sin, it's lacking. We have come to the place whereby we excuse ourselves from sin. Amen. Sin, it's sin. I said sin, it's sin. Amen. Amen. The definition, simple definition of sin to me is whatever that Jesus would not do. If Jesus would not go there, do that, watch that, listen to that, drink that, and if it's 1% alcohol, it's sin. The church needs a revival because many of us have forsaken our first love. Tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I was telling our church the other day, I said, you know, after church meetings, just after the service, I, I don't want somebody who knows me to come greet me, part of the leadership, to be around me. Please allow me to get somebody that is coming for the first time. I want to shake their hand. I want to give them a hug. I want to know who they are. Our problem is sometimes somebody comes visit for the first time. We, we don't want to care who they are, where they are from. What is their problems? And you find that this kind of a person came to church because he's seeking for love. They've been so hurt out there and the only place which they knew they could find God's love is in church. So we come into church where uh, we have forsaken our first love. You are not so sure if whether somebody who is smiling at you is really smiling because some uh, crocodile smiles. A amen. I wish I can talk to somebody up in here. Amen. We have to deal with the spirit of jealous right here in our church. Pray for your neighbor to be blessed. Because if they get blessed, it means that you are next. Yes. 
Let me deal with this quickly. The first level, as I've said, which God is going to answer your prayer, God is going to use a man. God is going to use a person. First Kings 17 verse 9. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have made resolutions for 2015 and you haven't achieved some of those, I came to declare that it is not over yet. Are you going to help me preach here? I said 2015 is not over yet. I came to declare that there's a person whom God has commanded. And if God commands a person, that person is commanded. But, but, but for God, in order for God to answer prayer, your prayers using somebody, it's also imperative for you to go to the place where God has commanded somebody. Because God can command somebody and they wait for you there, but you're not sensitive enough to go to the place where God has commanded somebody. But I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will give you guidance this week. The Spirit of the Lord will give you guidance. He will order your steps tomorrow that you're going to walk in the path and meet the person whom God has commanded to sustain you, to be a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. I declare that God is about to answer your prayer by touching somebody somewhere. And God is doing it right now. God is putting your name in the that contract God is putting your name in that job in that promotion God is putting your name in that my god I wish I can talk to somebody up in here give your neighbor a high five and say somebody has been commanded to bless me amen amen and before you look any further the person that is seated next to you can have been commanded to bless you amen so they were supposed to have given you a hundred dollar by now <laughs> Again, again, God sometimes can command somebody to be a blessing to you and the person becomes rigid because they are used by the demonic forces to, to stand be, be, I mean, against the blessing which God is about to bless you. This morning, anybody whom God has commanded... If they are being stubborn enough, right now we are releasing the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we make a declaration. If there's anybody whom God has commanded to bless me and they are refusing to bless me, God will rather remove them and put somebody in there who's going to be sensitive enough to be a blessing in my life. Oh, give somebody a high five and say, God is commanding somebody. In the name of Jesus, God is commanding somebody to make a recommendation for your promotion at your workplace. God is commanding somebody to sign that letter of promotion, that letter of increasement of your salary. God is commanding somebody to open a door. Shakatala Mahanda. Give the Lord a praise if you believe it. I preach to all singles that are ready to get married. I prophesy, amen, brother, this is the last Christmas you are alone. <laughs> God is commanding somebody somewhere. Somebody shout, my prayers are answered. Oh yes, my prayers are answered. My prayers are answered. Some of you right here, God has called you and he has commanded you to be an answer to somebody else's life. So you also have to be sensitive. God might touch you to bless somebody. God might touch you just to visit somebody. God might touch you just to pray for somebody. Because somebody right here is looking for an answer. And how beautiful it is to be an answer to somebody that has been trusting God for something. God, as much as we believe that you're going to use some people, we also want to believe that you can use us 
to be an answer to somebody somewhere. The second category which God answers prayers is when he uses his angels. His, when he uses his angels. Daniel 10 from verse 12 to 13. Then said he unto me, fear not. Somebody say fear not. For from the first day thou did set thy heart to understand. And just in that self before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Twenty-one days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. And I remained there with the king's of Persia. I came to make a declaration. The second level which God is going to use to answer your prayer is when God uses angels. But in case of, of, of Daniel, the Bible says the first day Daniel prayed, God answered him. Do you know that some of your prayers are answered already? But there's a demonic force in the spiritual realm that has been holding your answer. But this morning, Michael is being deployed to come fight those battles. You will be so surprised when that realm breaks and those blessings come down. You will be so surprised on how God has been answering your prayers. This morning, we put the demand in the heavens that God, we're not going home. We are not letting this service come to an end without our answers. Michael, do your job. Fight every princess that has been holding my answer. My God, I wish I can talk to somebody up in here. In the name of Jesus, I make a declaration. You are healed. You are blessed of the Lord. You are highly favored. God has anointed you and favored you. This morning you will realize that God has answered your prayers already. That which you have been fasting for, praying for, seeking and, and crying for. God is opening up that realm right now. Give the Lord a praise if you believe. I want you to pull down your blessing. Amen. I'm blessed. I pull down your blessing. Receive that car. Receive that house. Receive that anointing. Receive that promotion. Receive that healing. Receive that increase. Receive that favor. Receive that blessing of God. Oh! Devil, you don't stand a chance. We make a declaration that if God opens a door, that door shall be open. If God closes a door, that door will remain closed. And if any man closes a door here, God is opening a door somewhere. My answer is in the room. Genesis 18 from 1 to 10. The Bible says, when Sarah and Abraham were trusting God for a baby, some men came to visit them. And little did they know that these were not just ordinary men, but God has sent angels. That's why the Bible says, amen, don't forget to entertain the strangers because you will not know sometimes if you're hosting angels. I make a declaration in this season and in this time, angels are coming to knock at your door. But it will depend on how you take care of them. Because before they leave, they might be giving a word of that which you have trusted God for years. But I'm hearing angels saying, next year, by this time, you're going to have a baby. Next year, by this time, you will be driving your car. Next year, by this time, you will be staying in your own house. Next year, by this time, you're going to have a ring on your finger. Next year, by this time, God is opening unprecedented doors. Shout, next year, by this time. Shout it like you believe it and say, next year by this time. 
oh yes this is the last time we're having a conference in this facility next year by this time God has sent my God God is sending angels all around me to release a word of what I'm trusting God for somebody shout next year by this time oh my god oh my god oh my god that's why i said you better treat somebody who's sitting next to you with respect because you might never know next year by this time you might have to go through my secretary amen oh jesus take take my numbers while you can come on tell your neighbor say take my numbers while you can take a picture with me while you can take my autographs while you can because next year by this time you might have to go through the security to come closer man my god i don't know what you're trusting god for next year by this time but i make a declaration that next year by this time i will be in another level next year by this time i'll be shaking the hands of the presidents of the statesmen next year by this time i will be on the national television next year by this time i will be a multi-millionaire in doll can i talk to somebody up in here shout next year by this time devil if you thought you want to kill me i will be so alive you're gonna feel sorry for yourself in the name of jesus i'm not dying i'm not going down i'm going higher jesus is the messiah the church is on fire the devil is the liar i'm blessed amen do you still remember what tongue shandai amen <laughs> in luke 1 26 to 38 the bible says gabriel came to the city of galilee he named nazareth to a vision amen and 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 he said and the angel came into her and said hail thou art highly favored the lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst the women the angel is coming to you it's coming to make an announcement that you are highly favored i see a great salutation coming into your life some of you have been so faithful seeking god carrying your bible every sunday praying not missing any all, all night prayer amen you are you have been so faithful unto god and i feel that god is sending angels to your visitation right now and they are coming with good news you never knew that you're favored by the angel it's coming to say not only you're favored but you are highly favored amen highly favored it means that i'm not only favored by man but the heavens have favored me and if the heavens have favored me no man can be against the favor that god has favored me with you are about to get pregnant with a heavenly seed you are about to get pregnant with what god is about to pour in your spirit and in your life you're not gonna see things the way people and a human eye see you're gonna see things through how god sees things somebody shout i'm highly favored I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. In Acts 12. In Acts 12. Uh, let's go to Acts 12. Peter was arrested. And when Peter was arrested, the Bible says the church was praying without ceasing. That is in verse 5. 12 verse 5. The the church was praying without ceasing. And the Bible says Peter had 16 soldiers around him. And that night Peter fell asleep. My question is, how do you sleep when you're being told that tomorrow you're going to get killed? But Peter is saying, I've learned it from Jesus. Because when we, they were crossing over to the other side, the Bible says the sea got so tempestuous and they were so afraid water was coming in, they thought they were going to die. But when they realized Jesus was sleeping, so Jesus taught them to sleep in the life-threatening situation. Because if God said you are crossing over, God, whatever God has said, it settles it. 
amen no matter what you're gonna come across on the way if God says I'm crossing over I'm crossing over I don't care what the doctors have said but if God said I'm crossing over I'm gonna go over don't let the devil tell you divorce your wife or your husband stand together in agreement in that storm and say baby we're crossing over i wish i can talk to somebody up in here amen that sickness is not gonna kill you you gotta say i'm crossing over in any storm in any lack in any battle we're crossing over to the other side now peter was sleeping now verse six and uh, uh, verse 7 behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and light shone in the prison that's the few things that happens when the angel shows in number one the light will shine light is the symbol of revelation is the illumination as I'm preaching to you right now you are having a revelation in your spirit because light is it's shining wherever your answer was hidden the angel is shining the light right there and the bible says and he smote peter on the side peter felt a tap on his shoulder i make a declaration now that wherever your answer is your angel is tapping that answer on the shoulder my god i wish i can talk to somebody up in here and bible says the angel said arise rise up quickly amen your answer is not coming late it's not coming next year it's not coming in 10 years right now arise up quickly amen there's some sudden answers that god is about to answer you right now somebody shout it's coming quickly and the bible says and the chains fell off his hands whatever was binding your answer is falling off right now we lose that car we lose that house we lose that promotion i lose your husband i lose your wife i lose your baby for saints and uh, the angel said unto him greet thyself thyself and bind thy sandals and so he did and said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me watch this your answer is not coming naked are oh, you're not hearing me your answer is coming dressed god in other words if you give somebody a car don't give them in debt let it come cash if you are giving somebody a house it's not just coming as a house it's coming fully furnished when you walk in there it's gonna have the the, the couches the fridges amen it's gonna have the bed it's gonna have every piece of a furniture that you have ever wanted in that house because when your answer when your angel releases your answer it's coming out dressed up <laughs> And verse 9, verse 9, and said, and he went in and followed him. The angel was leading the answer. In other words, the answer is coming to the place where it's most needed. Your answer is not going to get lost. It's coming straight into your house. Some of you, it's going to find you right here in the service, in this place. Before you walk out any door that you came through, you are not walking out alone in, in the same way you have walked into this building. And the Bible says, when they have passed the second gate, the iron gate where that lead, that's verse 10, that led to the city which opened to them of his own accord. Even iron gates, there are some gates that have been preventing you because they cause, they carry the generational curse that the devil will say this one won't drive a car this one won't get married this one won't have a baby but whatever generational force that have been standing against you for your blessing is gonna open this morning now let's come to the interesting point right here let's come to the interesting point in verse 13 as peter peter was the answer as peter knocked at the door of the gate of the damsel i mean at, at the door of the gate 
a damsel came Hekan named Rhoda. A little girl came, not called Rhoda, she came. Because the only thing that your prayer is going to do is to bring your answer at the door. Somebody said, my answer is at the door. Faith without works is dead. So what you have to do is when the answer is at the door, you have to open the door. But some people get so excited that when the answer is at the door, they don't open the door. They continue to pray while God has answered their prayers. Verse 14, and she knew Peter's voice. She opened not the gate for glad. She was so excited. She could not open the gate, but ran in and told Peter how he stood at the gate. And they said unto her, thou art mad. They said it in King James. They didn't say you are mad. They said thou art mad. <laughs> but, 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 here's the case, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the deal. You see why there is order here. You see why there's only one person that is addressing this place and, and there's order and there's focus and there's attention. It's because there's no madman here. <laughs> but, but if there was a madman right here, amen, our focus will on, not only be in the preacher, but will always be in this mad person. Because mad is an abbreviation, M-A-D, which stands for making a difference. So if anybody says you are mad, you have to know that I'm making a difference in their world. I wish I can talk to somebody up in here. You, you got to believe God for some stuff until people say you are mad. You got to start doing certain things until people say you are mad. You got to make some confessions until people say you are mad. Because if people don't tell you then it means that you are not making any difference. I like it when people say, are you out of your mind? You know why I like it? Because the Bible said, let the mind that was in Christ be in you. So for me to allow the mind of Christ to be in me, it means that I got to be out of my mind and allow the mind of Christ be in me. Amen. 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 Somebody say your neighbor say, I'm not mad. Uh, get a better neighbor say, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Amen. Bishop, I can almost tell you right now that when you say there's a building coming here, there, there are some of the people right now, they might not say it, but there are some of the people who will say, oh, is our bishop mad? Amen. Because sometimes he can say things that might sound impossible, undoable. Amen. Somebody shout, I'm not mad. Because I'm seeing this thing, it's going to take place. It will happen, whether the devil likes it or not. Amen. I'm blessed. I'm going to build that house. I will build that church. I will drive that car. I will marry that girl. Come on, talk to me. I will have that baby. I'm going to go to America. I will fly to Australia and to the UK. I am not mad. If you think I'm mad, thank God it means that I am making a difference. Now, here's the deal, let's gentlemen. Here's the deal. Here is the deal. It's not everything that you have to tell people when you're about to engage into. Because some people will abort what you're about to do. We learn that if Peter is knocking at the door, why do you go around and tell people that Peter is at the door? Open the door, come with Peter, and say that which you have been praying for, it's here. Because some of us, we talk a lot. And that's, some, that's why some of you are not married when you are supposed to. Because when that girl says yes, or when that gentleman says, I'm going to marry you, you tell everybody. And you're going to even tell people that might even curse your marriage. Who am I talking to up in here? So when God answers you, there are times where you don't have to tell people, just come with an answer. Because there are some of the people that we, we call dream breakers. They will 
break your dreams by what they say. They will remind you who you are where you are from, how much your father has failed. And they will remind you if he has failed this much, how dare do you think you're ever going to prosper? That's why Paul says, beware of the dogs. In, in, in Philippians 3 verse 2, I always wonder, say, why will Paul say, beware of the dogs? Where, where, where Christians coming with dogs to church? But, but I've learned that it was not so. It was because dogs will pronounce three English words. A dog is able to ask who. A dog is able to ask how. Ah, don't dogs say how in Kenya? Amen. Like, like in the middle of the night, I don't know why they do it at the night. They complain like, why? You know. So, 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 so when Paul says, beware of the dogs, it's there are people who speak like dogs. That when you're about to do something, they will be asking, who do you think you are? How do you think you're going to do that? Why do you think you are the one who can do that? So if you want to do something and you find questions like this, you got to know that Paul has warned me to be careful of the dogs. Let's go to the last level which God answers prayers. It's when he comes by himself. Exodus 3 verse 7 to 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. Somebody say, he has seen my affliction. And heard their cry. Somebody say, he has heard my cry. He has heard my cry. Say it like you believe it. Say, he has heard my cry. That's much better. Amen. Amen. For I know their sorrows. Somebody say, he knows my sorrows. Knows my sorrows. Three things. Three things. It's when God has seen your affliction. It's when God has heard your cry. It's when God knows your sorrows. These three things gives God. God, the audacity to come down. By this time, God is not going to send a person. This time, God is not going to send an angel. He's going to come down by himself. I wish I can encourage somebody here who has been going through affliction and sorrows and somebody that has been crying. I'm here to confront you to say, God is coming down this morning. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, God is coming down. Amen. Amen. He's not sending a representative. He's coming down. The Holy Ghost is coming down. Jesus is coming down. And guess what? When Jesus comes down, he's not going to fit in that prison. Paul and Silas, before God gets down, there the prison will be shaking from its foundation and all the doors will be opening when God comes down the devil he's a liar he knows that God is working something and what he wants to do he wants to discourage you break your spirit but we have to find people that will know that God is the reward of those that diligently seek him stand and give the Lord a praise Give the Lord a praise. Come on. We command right now. From the north, east, west, and south. For any answer that God had for you. If there's any man who was supposed to open a door, recommend you, give you a promotion, give you a job, call you for a job interview, if there's any man somewhere, Father, we pray right now that Father God lead us into a place where you have commanded 
somebody to sustain me. I'm calling on the 24 hour miracle. I said I'm calling on the 24 hour miracle. Some of you is not next year, but it's tomorrow around this time. In the name of Jesus. We're even going to violate the rules, play softly. We are also going to violate the rules of office hours. Somebody was supposed to have called you through the office hours, will call you after the service when you walk out of this place. Shambra Katala Mashata. In the name of Jesus. Father, anybody was supposed to get an answer through angels. The angels that have been held for 21 days, for months and years, we break that force and that atmosphere that has been holding our answers. Michael, as you engage in war, we thank you for the release of blessings this morning. If you believe it, clap your hands and receive. God, I pray that you come down for Kenya. I pray that you come down for Nairobi. Come down in Zime. Let people know that you reside here. Let there be the outbreak of revival. I prophesy to those that have been going through hardship. Whom the devil has been challenging left, right and center. Whom have not been sleeping. You have been getting challenges through sickness, financial uh, uh, battles and so forth and so on. Even marital and in your business and in your workplace. God, please come down this morning in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Shine your light. Let us experience the peace of God. The shalom peace. Come with your healing. Come with your deliverance. Come with your abundance. Come with your peace. Come, come, come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Ghost. Give him praise. Come on. Give him praise. Come on. Give him praise. Yerebo shatalaba. <laughs>